The Small Business Show, episode 343 for Wednesday, September 1st, 2021. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co. The show where small businessing is what we do. It's a verb, folks. That's how it works. SaneBox is our sponsor at SaneBox.com slash small business where you get 14 days free and a $25 credit. This is perhaps my favorite service that I use. So I can't wait to tell you about it, but, but really just go sign up for it. You'll see. I'll help you. It's fine. I'll tell you about it in a little bit for now, for now here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in California. Lafayette, California, of course. I'm Shannon Jean. <laughs> how, how goes it? Uh, somewhere out in California. Yeah, it's somewhere. It, it it goes. It's fine. I've got some travel coming up and things are a little yeah, nuts. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yes. That's uh, good. We're always busy. I mean, we're not, no, no, we're not busy. We're uh, productive. We're productive. That's yeah. right. There's a big, big difference there. Big uh, difference. Important. Hey, we are doing a things. survey. We need your answers. And oh, yeah. You need our $50 is how it's going to work. So um, we, we're doing a here at backbeat media. We're doing a survey with all of our podcast partners, uh, including us here at the small business show, of course. And a lot of what we want to find out is just who you are. Uh, but we also have some questions about the show itself. So f- please do take a minute and it should really only take a minute. We, I, we went through this a lot here at backbeat to really keep this survey tight and easy, but, uh, but, well, if you if you care to give us your email address at the end, we'll put you in a drawing for uh, a fifty dollar Amazon gift card, and we're giving one of those away for every hundred respondents of the survey. So, oh, that's the, cool. Well, because you know you don't want to dilute it and then have yeah. just you just give away one. No, this this information is really truly valuable to us. So we're giving away one for every every hundred, which I thought was a good way to do it. I don't know, Let's yeah, make things up. Yeah, do you say that on the survey that it says for every hundred? Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So there's a link in the show notes here at businessshow.co. But you know what? I'll link it to businessshow.co slash survey so that uh, so that if you if you're like riding your bike now or something and you remember, it'll just bring you there. But you can always go to businessshow.co. It'll be there in the show notes. So would really yeah, let us know it. what you think, because, yeah. you know, if you if you don't like the show, we, we certainly would like to change that. And if we'd you like want to know, to, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'd like to know. And and uh you know, we can adapt and uh, talk about things that you'd like to talk yeah. about. And there is a place Perfect. if you care to type, you know, some feedback in, you, you can do that too. So, yeah. Perfect. That's cool. Cool. What are we talking hey, about uh, today, man? Yeah. So we're going to do a couple things. Um, we want to talk about local search engine uh, optimization tips to get your small business higher up in the search rankings when people are searching locally, like, uh, I don't know, donut shops around me or paint supplies around me, right? Interesting. Uh, yeah. Or near me. Near, near me. me. Near, all, all those yeah. near me yeah. searches. Yeah. Near me searches yeah. are very, very important. Uh, and then after we, we talk about that for a bit, we're going to talk about customer t- returns. One of my absolutely favorite topics uh, and I'm not, you know, saying that in jest because I think that it can be such a big problem. But if you put a spin on it, it can be a tremendous opportunity to uh, connect with your customers oh, and yeah. uh, a big plus for your marketing. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about that. Nice. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get started. Let's talk about the uh, near me, man. What- yeah. Yeah, near me. So we did an entire episode uh, around this topic um, right. a while back. We will link it in the show notes. And and I, I, one of the most important things that you need to do for your small business is you want to make sure that your listings on these search engines and on maps, it becoming even more important uh, or as important, are are correct and they're claimed by you. If if you don't go up and claim the information, well, who knows if it's right. And what I say claim is you want to go up and say, I'm the owner of this business. Yep. Uh, they'll do some verification. We're going to, we'll put some uh, links in the show notes on how to go about getting connected and claiming your Google search yep. results, your Apple maps listings and your Bing places listings, which are used by just thousands and thousands of companies. And uh, you want to go up there do the verification process 
and then make sure the information that's up there is correct and it's presented in a way that you want it to be presented. Uh, one of the things I really like to do is for local search, I, I don't like to use 800 numbers. I think that uh, kind of turns people off. And uh, I think it's very important for local search results to have your local phone number, your local area code, because you're connecting with people and they see it and they go, oh, that's in my town. You know, that's uh, right. you, where, where is I'm that at. Is, still... Like I, I, that will go away at some point, right? Maybe so, so many people are keeping. Like I wonder if one more generation is all it takes for the Could area be. code to not matter yeah, anymore. Because mobile and it doesn't matter. It doesn't. And yeah, no you, long like yes, you get a number yes. as a kid now, right? Like yeah. my kids have cell phone numbers. I, I would not be surprised if they keep those numbers longer than I am alive. Could right, be right. I mean, right. like they have no right. reason to change it, and every reason not to. Right, like people yeah. know how to but get in touch search, with them. So yeah, and now, but and, and you're right. I think that eventually it'll just be a non-issue. But I, I but think right now, is, I think it still now. matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a good. You know, you just want to do that. Uh, and I even, you, have, you know, I even feel that way when I travel. Obviously, you know, I if I'm going to Oregon because I got to drop my son off at school. So when I see a 503 number as the listing for the restaurant, I know they're local. So yes. where I am visiting, exactly right. if I see cue, 800, then I wonder, oh, wait a minute. Like, what am I getting myself into? Is this some chain? Like, I don't know. You know, so yeah, well, look, I can and, see that. And yeah. There's all kinds of, one of the things that I've noticed with these uh, near me searches is there's all kinds of service providers trying to get in between you and the business that you want to connect with, right. whether it's uh, home advisor, Angie's list, uh, you know, on and on and on with companies trying to be like, Oh, come use our, you know, search engine of local businesses and we'll connect you with them. And they're charging a fee or taking a referral, however it works. Sure. So I, I like using, you know, that, that local area code to your point, and I'm and of course that can be spoofed, but for the most part, I think it's a great way to uh, well, and just, and, just show. and you know, feel if, if for whatever reason you don't have a number that's local to to the area where you are, go get a Google Voice number. You know, yeah. you might be able to do that you for did. free, and then and then it's just a voicemail, but it can also ring your cell phone, and it doesn't matter yeah. how that works. So, and yeah. we talked about we yeah. talked last week. We talked about different. Uh, phone systems and, yeah. you know, virtual right. and this kind of thing. You can right. tie it all into there and, and, uh, you know, it works out, That's works right. out really great. Um, if you have multiple locations, you want to be sure that you're doing this for each of those locations. So when mm. people are using maps to find things, you know, that it, it's coming up cl the, your location that's closest to them. It's, it's really important. Uh, I have heard, thing, I have heard of issues getting things, Getting claiming your listing on Apple Maps. Have you? Have you? You, you probably haven't even tried to do that because you haven't had a local business since Apple Maps nope. has mattered. Is that right? Okay. Uh, yeah. T since it really grew, right? I yeah. have not. So uh, I have had problems, you know, claiming on Google and on Bing as well. Okay. Their verification. Uh, you need to be sure that a human can answer whatever phone number you put down uh, to verify. They that's the one they want in your listing, and yeah. someone needs to answer that and enter a code and this kind of thing. So sure. you need to be able to get access to that, and that may mean uh, temporarily changing the way your phone tree works if you're using a virtual phone system. Right. Uh, that you just okay, just make the number ring uh, at my phone right now, and then do the verification, get it all set up, and then go back and okay, now point it out to my sales department or yeah, re you re reengage your phone tree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I've heard that Google is now for many businesses doing a postcard that they send to you. Oh uh, yeah, yes. So it, to confirm it, that you actually have this address and you're yep. actually there and all that good stuff. So yeah, yeah, it's great. And uh, you know, most of these local near me uh, results also tie into your reviews on these platforms. Mm. So you, you know, you want to encourage uh, and respond to those reviews, even if it's just a, Hey, thank you. We really appreciated you come, you know, using our service or you want to clarify something. If some, someone posts something you didn't understand. So getting up there and getting involved is important because there could be all this data about your small business up on these platforms that you're not in control of. You're not setting this or telling the story that you want to tell. And, and that's, I think the most important thing that we could leave you with today. I agree. 
I agree. Yeah. No, and that's a good that's good advice no matter what your business is, but especially here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's good, good stuff. stuff. So go take a look. Do kind of an audit, if you will. Go search up there. It used to drive me crazy, but I forced myself to do it. Use a different browser. Uh use another computer. Come in from another location because results are different based on where you're at. What IP address? Try it with a VPN and see what happens because you're your location's not going to be shown as much because um, more and more people are going to use v- VPNs or the relay at Apple's going to, the yeah. Apple relay thing. That'll be interesting to see what comes up then too. They say that you will get an IP that the Apple says that you will get an IP that is local ish to you. When I oh, tested good. it here, I've got, I'm in New Hampshire. I'm about, let's say 40 minutes from the Massachusetts border. I got an IP from a place that's about 20 minutes South of the Massachusetts border. So not, you know, not New Hampshire, not super hyper local, but I think that's sort of Apple's local point enough. is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to be as hyper local because otherwise then, you know, <laughs> what's the point? So, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. It's cool. cool. Yeah. So it's great. So, you know, if you have tips about coming up in near me or things that you've tried with your small business feedback at businessshow.co and put the term near me searches in the subject line. So we will know, uh, uh, to look for it. No, no, to look for it that way. Yeah. I, I want to talk about our sponsor SaneBox here. Look, is email a soul crushing distraction for you? My guess is you're answering yes. And therefore my answer to you is that you need SaneBox because what SaneBox is, is it has the, it is, it, they have, but it also is this AI engine, artificial intelligence engine that monitors your inbox and automatically the email from like all the knucklehead stuff and the newsletters you didn't remember signing up for and all those things are moved to your sane later or your sane news folder. And what's left in your inbox are the things to you, the important things. And using email folders, you can, if you know how email folders work, you know how SaneBox works. Like it's that simple. All you're doing is moving folders around. You can create new folders for it to filter things into. And the way you tell it what you want to filter into that folder is by putting the thing in that folder. So if you get some newsletter and you're like, oh, I didn't, I don't want that in my inbox. You move it to your Sane News folder and boom, it's there. You get a receipt from Amazon. You want that in your Sane Later folder. Move it to the Sane Later folder. The next receipt that comes from Amazon is there. If you wind up, and the, the corollary is true too, right? If you see something in your Sane Later folder, you're like, wait, 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 that's an email from Shannon. I want that in my inbox. You put it in your inbox. The next time I get an email from Shannon, it goes to my inbox. It's super trainable and the trainings are for you. These aren't just like generic trainings that you're sort of hoping will stick. They definitely stick immediately because they are for you. It's an amazing service. I've been using it for years and I cannot imagine managing my email without it. Truly, like it is life changing. There are other features, too, that I haven't even gotten into, like the ability to have it remind me when I send an email out to somebody that I know I'm going to want to follow up on if they don't answer to me. I put in in the BCC field, Shannon, I put one W for one week at SaneBox.com. Then I send out the email. If they haven't responded in a week, SaneBox tells me, hey, you should, you should, you know, you wanted to be reminded of this. Now, if I definitely want to be reminded in a week, I can do one W dot keep whether or not you replied to me, I'm still going to get a reminder to follow up with you in a week. And then of course I can choose what to do with that information, but it really is a fantastic service. And like I said, at the beginning of the episode, if you go to sanebox.com slash small business, you get a 14 day trial for free, no credit card required. And because you're a small business show listener, you get a $25 credit towards your SaneBox subscription. Go check it out today. And it's SaneBox, S-A-N-E, box.com slash small business. And our thanks to SaneBox for sponsoring this episode. All right, That's Shannon. Cool. No, I know. No, cra- I, crazy, useful. Uh, it's super sponsor. crazy. I know I talked for, I talked a mile an hour, a mile a minute and, and, and a lot about that, <laughs> but I love it. I couldn't, yeah, I good. truly it, it honestly is worth probably at least one employee. It's like having an assistant managing wow. my email for me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. I love those uh, sponsors that we use and oh. you know, just 
couldn't dream without it. Couldn't without dream of it. being without it. No, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Let's, so talk, let's talk about, about returns. returns. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so if you sell products, you know, uh, you're, you're going to have returns, right? right. It, it's just it's just part of the, the uh, you know, whole concept and people change their minds or stuff goes wrong or things don't work. And the the message I really want to, you know, get across in this the brief uh, time we have left together today is uh, you really want to embrace them and, and turn them into a competitive advantage. And, and I'm going to tell you how to do that. Mm. Um, you know, I, for years I was really frustrated. I mean, we were in the technology business, so as you can imagine, uh, there's all kinds of reasons people return things and get people get frustrated with things like this didn't work. You said it would do this, or I thought it would do this and it didn't. Um, and you know, Returns can be expensive. Uh, they can be very frustrating for your customer support staff, frustrating for you, frustrating for your cash flow when you have to, you know, uh, issue lots of returns. So the the thing I, I learned over the years is the easier you make returns, the less headaches you're going to have and the less headaches your customers are going to have. Uh, and and let's let's jump into that first, okay. uh, eliminating eliminating those headaches. And what I would suggest you do is create a, a system that has some standards that are as automated as possible. And ideally, what you really want is a customer just to handle the whole thing. So you don't have to be involved in it because if your return policy is simple, very easy to understand, and uh, somebody should be able to come in, request and set up a return all on their own and without having to touch a phone without having to, you know, they should be able to do it from a piece of paper in the box or from your website, uh, or from an email. And if that happens, that I think that's just a huge success. If something rolls in and you just issue a refund and you're done, I think that's uh, you save time and money for everybody. Yeah. Well, right. any, and, and by, by making it clear to the customer that this is an easy process, you might get less returns too, right? You will. You will get less returns. I guarantee it. Uh, you know, you want this policy to be, and, and that's part of the, uh, the mindset is people are like, well, if I make it really simple and all this kind of stuff, I'm just going to get flooded with returns. But I would argue that you will actually, you know, you'll have less. It, I've just seen it over and over. No, it um, makes sense because if I feel like I'm on the fence about a product, right. And, and I look and I see, oh, returns are super easy. Like I know for me with Amazon returns are super easy and it's like, okay, well that's a non-friction point. So I can give yes. this a couple more weeks before I make the, the final decision as to whether or not I'm going to keep it or not. Right. Like if it's something yes. that where that is, is a realistic path to take. Whereas if I get it and it's like, oh, it's not working exactly as I want out of the gate and oh crap, look, it's good. I got to call somebody and I got to. Wait on yep. hold. Okay. Well now the next opportunity I have to carve out time to do that, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm jumping ship. That's it. I'm out. Like I, That's right. I don't, I don't want to be stuck at the end of my return window having to do something that I need to wait three days to have time to do. So yeah, yeah. I can see it. And, and it, it changes your behavior, you know, exactly. We, we always used to say, uh, like in our, our return sake, okay, well, uh, what's the window? Do you want to give them 30 days? Well, then, you know, give them 45 days because you know if, if they call you a few days after and they're complaining about something, we, we know we're just going to give them the return anyway. That's it. So tell them it's 30, but on the in our, our return system, program it to accept any return for 45 days. So when the when a customer comes up, so they're pleasantly surprised. Oh, I missed the window, but you know what? We're just going to take it anyway. Yeah, it's all good. Um, yeah. yeah. So you're you're... Return policy, like on your website and your email, on the invoice you send your customer, you should you should have that there, and it should fit. It should be short, simple, and very easy to understand. If it's complicated, something is wrong. If you're putting a barrier in between your customer and you know that return your business, like you said, Dave, a friction point, you're creating more work for your customers, more work for yourself. And you can't lean into it as a marketing program, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got uh, it. Now, Makes sense. Yeah, man. Yeah. Now I'm talking about just straightforward, simple returns. You know, if for returns that need customer support, if you, you know, technical or you made a mistake and a customer's upset, you want to use the two tokens concept that we've talked about. Or we talk about all the time on the show, uh, episode 296, which we will link in the show notes. Yep. We, we really took a deep dive into this two tokens concept. And 
if you can embrace that, it, it and, and if you can teach it to your customer service people and then use it throughout your organization, it'll, it, it's a life changing uh, system to build trust and credibility with your customers and it, it can change everything. Yeah. Um, so, I, so go up there and do, and, uh, and yeah, we'll, to we'll show. link to it. That it, I always say every business is the customer service business. And therefore, the first thing you need to understand is this two tokens concept of customer service, because otherwise you're just going to be screwing it up left and right. Yes, you are. (laughs) I've always said that I, you know, was in the customer service business since day one. And then I learned about the two tokens concept and I thought, wow, I I know I've said I was in the customer service business, but I've been missing this really important piece. So we'll we'll link to that so you can you can have that. Yeah. And I've learned over time since since I've learned and I think mastered that two tokens concept is actually it goes well beyond customer support. And if you can use it in your life, uh, when other situations mm-hmm. come up, it can benefit you tremendously. And and we can, we can, well, we every can relationship is customer yes. service, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, it, it's definitely <laughs> is. So yeah. you create this system. One of the things you really need to do to have a simplistic and successful, you know, return system is you need to measure it, right? Uh, you need to be able to, Check your returns, look at the percentage, what the numbers look like, the reasons for the returns. Um, and then you need to decide what is an acceptable percentage for your business, right? I I, I don't know what your business is, right. but you know, if, if you like for us in the technology business, you know, our returns, we, we were thrilled when returns were two to two to three, four, you know, percent. If they got over five, six, seven percent, we would start looking at it. What's going on? What, what changed? And, yeah. Yeah. What changed? And it's oftentimes it, it's something you may miss. It could be as something as simple as the description of the product on your website or the fact that there's not a tutorial linked in the email confirmation that you send to the customer, like how to set it up. Right. right. Uh, or, you know, I bought store returns for, you know, my whole career and maybe the company that you're buying that particular product from the quality is just not there and you need to reassess what you're paying them. And if you can buy from them in the, you know, at all. Right. Right. So, so you want to look at that and see if there's a systemic problem with the product or how you are selling it or how you're supporting it to see if you can get those numbers down. So if you, if you have all kinds of different product categories, you may have to, you know, measure those returns by category. So you can say, you know, gee, we're just, okay, we're not going to sell green socks because they come back all the time. So, you know, you want to change your behavior by measuring uh, those returns. Yeah. Black socks. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you can't tell if they're dirty. You're good to go. There you go. (laughs) It works for me. (laughs) Uh, So, you know, you spent all this time, you got this back end system in place. Your return system, turn process is very easy. Your policy is two or three sentences. Once you've got that system in place, now you want to start promoting it. You want to talk about it all the time. Make it part of your story. Talk about your unique return policy, your 30-day or 45-day, no hassle, whatever it is. Make it part of your marketing program. Compare and contrast it with other companies and talk about what a nightmare it is, What, how many hoops you have to jump through. You know, company A, make a phone call, wait on hold, get a number, go get a label. Do I mean, boom, boom, boom. Give this, you know, eight or 10 step process and then show your process. Yeah. Get your product. Oh. There's, a la- there's a label in the box, send it back, right? And, and, you know, show how simple and how easy it is. It helps to build trust. It helps to convert people that are on the fence of buying from you, right? Yeah. And I, it's one really one important. thing I will throw out there that is yeah. a friction point of mine. I understand when something is a large item that I probably need to be on the hook for paying shipping to return it if I want to return it, right? Especially if there was free shipping to get it to me initially, right? So, okay, yes. fine. It, some companies eat it on both sides and that's even better, but I do get it. What I hate is when I have to go and print that label and buy my postage myself. What I much rather have is you give me a label. I put it on the thing. I send it back and then you refund me whatever you're going to whatever I paid minus the postage it took to get it back to you. That's That's a great way to do it. That to me is because it's that friction point, right? Like I'm, I'm realistic about this. I understand, you know, this costs thirty eight dollars to ship one way. Okay, I, I like fine, whatever. 
I'm yeah. going to pay one of those ways. Great. No problem. Don't make yeah, me it, negotiate with UPS to do that. No, yes. no, no, no. Yeah, Cause you're my job. All, right. yeah, and also the, your, your rates as a business owner for UPS or FedEx are dramatically lower yeah. than what an end user is going to, and you're going to get a phone call or an email that says, Hey, I went to ship this thing back and it was 80 bucks and yeah. you only charged me 20 to get it to me. You know, that kind of, cause retail shipping rates, are ridiculous. Re and, they're ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. As, and so, I understand why. Like, I get that. But share that with me. And like you said, make that part of your story even. Correct. Say, hey, look, because of the cost of shipping these these heavier items, anything over, you know, certain size or certain weight, we have to charge you. But we will extend our rates to you for that return shipping so you can avoid paying retail shipping rates. Like, all of a sudden, right. now this is a Talk benefit. Yes. This is a benefit. Right. Like all you got to do is talk about it. Yep. Yeah. And even if it doesn't work out for this purchase, you want that customer to come back. You've already done a bunch of work to get them. You yeah. Know, you've paid and all this kind of stuff. So if they buy one thing and they're like, ah, I didn't like that, that return process can turn them into a lifetime customer or someone that will never buy from you again. Yeah. You get to pick. It's that it's two tokens you get to applied pick. here. Yes. Yep. So pay a little extra attention. Talk about it. We used to joke around with the customers. We'd have labels inside the boxes for just, you know, we, we eventually just paid for, for, for free shipping. Sure. It's just, we just decided we had people first, we did this. Hey, if you're just changing your mind, it's going to cost you. If there's a problem, you know, we'll pay for it. But we just wound up arguing over if there was a problem or not. And, right. and they often brought something up. So we just said the heck with it. And our, yeah. our stuff was relatively lightweight, yeah. but we, we would promote it in the box. We we're like, Hey, go ahead, use the return label. We'll still love you. Let's do more business next time. Yeah. Right. And, and come up with ways to promote it and phrases and to put a smile on people's face. Everything will be better about your business. If you can make that happen. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. A couple more comments I have about, you know, yeah, man. Uh, more and more companies using fulfillment centers, which I, I love to manage their inventory, ship their orders, handle returns. I think that's awesome. However, be sure that your return process, your, your return philosophy on how you want to handle your returns matches the capabilities of the fulfillment center. Don't let the fulfillment center dictate how returns are going to work for your business. Mm. If, if they can't do what you want, go find somebody else, you know, uh, or, or work with them to do it. It's, it's important to tell, Hey, these are my customers, not, not yours. They're not the fulfillment center's customers. So no, you want to be sure now, maybe they've got it set up and it works great and you're happy with that. And that's, that's wonderful. That's great. But if it needs to be tweaked, if you want to, to have a better experience for your customers a certain way, you have to bring it up. Because I've, I've had that happen before and it could be uh, problematic. Well, yeah, you you are. I mean, it's just like hiring a person, an employee at your business that is going to be customer facing. You need to make yes. sure you need to train them how you deal with customers, because how could they know? I mean, yeah, like, they, that's right. They don't know. And so just because you're contracting with a fulfillment house doesn't change that. If they're going to be interfacing with your customers in any way, including just the boxes that they're sending, you need to train them and work with yep. them to make sure that they are interfacing with your customers your way, not their way. Cause you yeah. are their customer. That's it. That's right. That's it. I, I love, you know, the, when you buy a product and you open that box, it, it, I, I've talked about this for years, this out of box experience, right? The box is, kind of your salesperson, even yeah. though the customer has made the leap and they've ordered that product from you, you know, they're still like, well, how's, what's it going to look like? Is it going to be what they said? Does it match the pictures? Does it do what they say? You know, there should be a piece of paper right in there. And when they open it up, that tells them, you know, thank you, yada, yada, yada. But it also says, Hey, if this doesn't work out, we're still here for you. We're, we want to be, uh, you know, a, a, your support system, just do this and it'll all work out. That's really a great opportunity to connect with your customer on an emotional level and provide that safety net that we all want that, oh, I'm not left out in the cold uh, for this thing. Uh, and, and tons of companies do it. And here's your chance to stand above them. So uh, I'll, I'll just leave you with, I think easy returns, they help to build your credibility they buy you awesome re uh, reviews, like we talked about earlier on the the near me searches. Because even if the the product didn't work out, if you handled it right, somebody is apt to go up and write a good review about the experience. Maybe the product didn't work for them, 
Um, they create trust between you and your prospective customers. If they know that it's not, if, if it doesn't work, don't worry, we're still here. They're going to buy more yeah. and that will help offset these, the costs of these returns. So you just want them to know that if things don't work out, just send it back. It's no big deal. No big we deal. still love you. And we're going to be here next time you're ready to buy something else. And and that's really powerful. If you can use that message as part of your story, you know, you'll win every time. I love it. I love it, man. This is great stuff. So tell us how you handle returns and what I've got wrong and you know, what I got right. We'd love to hear from you. Feedback at businessshow.co. Put the su- word returns in the subject line so we'll know what show you're talking about. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for listening, folks. Make sure to check out SaneBox, of course. SaneBox.com slash small business for that 14-day trial and that $25 credit just for being a small business show listener. Keep living that charmed life, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening.